Hello everyone, welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today, we're going to be starting off an exciting new segment on the National Science Olympiads, or NSO. NSO is a competitive examination conducted for school students across India. So, these competitions are conducted in various categories, so these exams are conducted in ver according to class levels. Today, we're going to be looking at sample questions from the NSO Level 2 exams for Grade 8. So, let's start off. Here's our first question. What are the characteristics of rocket fuel? Now, there are two statements given alongside it, of three characteristics given, light and compact, high calorific value, burns rapidly. Now, we need to find out which of these characteristics are true. Is it only one, only three, only one and two, one, two, and three? So, rocket fuel um, is basically burning hydrogen with oxygen. So liquid hydrogen is the rocket fuel for, which is the fu it's the fuel used for rockets. Now, the first first characteristic says it's light and compact. So we're using liquid hydrogen in order to make it compact. And hydrogen is the lightest element in the periodic table. So therefore, the first characteristic holds true. What's about the second characteristic? High calorific value. Now, calorific value is basically uh, the energy output per amount of fuel. So, rockets have the best of the highest calorific value fuel, and that is hydrogen. So, therefore, the second characteristic also is true. The third characteristic burns rapidly. Now, when we burn hydrogen, we find out that it burns with a pop sound, which means that it burns very rapidly. So, therefore, all the three characteristics are true, which means option D, 1, 2, and 3, turns out to be the right option. Now, let's look at another question. Which of the following statements is or are correct. Number one, cholera is caused by protozoa and statement number two says malaria is caused by protozoa. So statement one is correct, statement two is correct, both statements are correct, are correct, both statements are incorrect. So these are our four options. So how do we look at this? Statement one, cholera is caused by a protozoa. Protozoa are a group of organisms. We need to find out if the back it, it, we need to find out if the microorganism that causes cholera is in fact a protozoa so protozoa i mean cholera the disease is actually it's caused by a microorganism called vibrio cholerae now vibrio actually refers to comma shaped bacteria. So that means cholera is actually caused by a bacteria and note not a protozoa. So therefore statement one is wrong. Now what does that mean? It means that option A and option C are incorrect. Because the fact that statement one is incorrect means that the first option would never be correct. It also means that there is no chance that both statements can be correct in this particular scenario as the first statement is proven wrong. Now we need to find out whether option B or D turns out to be the correct option. Statement 2. Malaria is caused by a protozoa. Malaria is caused by an organism known as Plasmodium. And Plasmodium is one of the, one of the examples that we give for protozoa. So therefore, option B, statement 2 is correct, turns out to be the right option. So malaria is indeed caused by a protozoa as opposed to cholera, which is actually caused by a bacteria. So um, option B, statement 2 is correct, 
turns out to be the right option. Let's look at this question. We need to look at the figure and find out which of the following forces is necessary for a person to climb the mountain. So we're looking at a rock climber uh, who's climbing up a cliff face and he is using his arms and legs to grip to either the cliff face or the rope. So we need to find out which of these forces is necessary so that a person can climb the mountain in this way. We have gravitational force, electrical force, frictional force, magnetic force. So right off the bat we can discount electrical and magnetic force. We are dealing with a living object here which has very few magnetic properties or electron electrical properties so options B and D are incorrect. So we have gravitational force and frictional force as the two forces which may lead to the right answer. So is it gravitational force or frictional force? Now gravitational force is one of the four fundamental forces of nature and it always acts downwards in the earth. So when you study about gravity on earth we find that gravity always attracts any object towards the earth which in our perspective means down the mountain. So if gravitational force is acting on this person and it always acts on any object it turns out that that gravitational force would actually hinder the person to climb a mountain rather than helping him. So option A turns out to be incorrect. The right answer is option C, frictional force. You see that the person is using his one of his feet and one of his arms to grip to the cliff face and another and the other arm is used to grip the rope. So it, at these scenarios there is no slipping taking place which means that they do not pass against each other and slip off. And that criteria of not slipping is due to the frictional force where uh, two surfaces resist relative movement uh, due to surface attraction between them and which is primarily called frictional force. So therefore option C frictional force is the necessary force required for a person to climb the mountain as shown in the figure. Now if we look at this question this is again a question with two statements however this time we need to find out whether these two statements are correct and if the statements that are given if the second statement given is the reason for the first statement this is what we call an assertion reason type question so we have two statements the first statement says sound travels faster on a rainy day than on a dry day statement two says the velocity of sound depends upon the medium now we have four options the first option says both statements are true and statement two is the correct explanation of statement one option B also claims that both statements are true are true but statement two is not the correct explanation for statement one Option C says statement 1 is true, but statement 2 is false. Option D says statement 1 is false, but statement 2 is true. So when it comes to an assertion reason type question, it's best if we look at focus on the two statements. Let's look at statement 2. The velocity of sound depends upon a medium. Now, sound waves require a medium to travel, which means that the speed of sound also depends on the medium. If we look at the experimental data it's found out that sound travels fastest in solids and slowest in gases and it does not travel at all in vacuum so therefore statement true two turns out to be true now what does this mean this means that option C turns out to be incorrect because in this particular option it says that statement two is false now let's look at statement one sound travels faster on a rainy day than on a dry day now on a dry day the air does not contain any water so it's just gas on a rainy day however it's both gas and liquid now liquid is a denser medium than a gas which means it has more particles which means it would have faster sound 
sound would travel faster through it. So that means sound travels faster on a rainy day than on a dry day. The first statement is also true. Now what does that mean? It means option D is incorrect because it says statement 1 is false. Now what about the remaining options we have? Both statements are true in each of the options, but the relation between the two statements is the question. Now statement 2 says velocity of sound depends upon the medium. Now this statement is true. Statement 1 Sound travels faster on a rainy day because in a rainy day there's more liquid uh, in the atmosphere and liquid helps the sound to travel faster. So as you can see, because of the addition of a medium, that's the liquid water, we find that sound does travel faster. So it depends on the composition of the medium that we have, we see that sound indeed changes its speed. So therefore statement 2 is in fact the correct explanation for statement 1. That means option A turns out to be the right option. Now, if you want to find out whether uh, these two, statement 2 become, is the correct explanation for statement 1, a popular trick that we use is to add because between the two sentences and read them continuously. So if you were to do that, it would be sound travels faster on a rainy day than on a dry day because the velocity of sound depends upon the medium. Now, as you can see, that statement that, that, statement that we made absolutely makes sense. So therefore, option A, both statements are true and statement 2 is the correct explanation of statement 1, is the right option. Now let's look at the final question for today. The diagram shows the path of a light ray X directed at a plane mirror. Which of the following is the correct reflected ray? Is it M, N, O, or P? So here we would need to apply the laws of reflection. The first law states that the incident ray, the reflected ray, and the normal at the point of incidence, they all lie in the same plane. And the second law states that angle of incidence is always going to be equal to the angle of reflection. Now, X is the incident ray. We know this because A, it's not part of the options, and B, the arrow of direction is pointing towards the mirror, which means it's traveling towards the mirror, which means it's an incident ray. All the other rays have arrowheads pointing away from the mirror. Now, if you look at our options, the first ray that's immediately next to X is M. Is this the correct reflected ray? Well, if you look at the normal that's given, the normal is an imaginary line which is always going to be perpendicular to the plane mirror. However, as you can see, if you were to draw the line between x, normal between x and m, that is not perpendicular to the plane mirror. So that means m cannot be the correct reflected ray because for x and m to be an actual reflection taking place, we would need to have the surface of the mirror at the point of incidence to be perpendicular to that normal, which is not how the mirror is actually placed. So therefore, option A is incorrect. What about option P? I mean, option D, the, the reflected ray P. Now, if you look at reflected ray P, let's um, erase all of this so that we can get a better understanding. So if you look at um, the so if you look at incident ray X and reflected ray P, their normal, which should be which is also the angle bisector, would follow this particular path, which again means that the mirror would have been at an angle and not in the position that it is. So again, option D is incorrect. Option C, O. If you look at O and X, this is the normal that is, f that is present between the two rays, the angle bisector. However, 
it turns out that the angle of it, it turns out that the normal is again not perpendicular to the mirror so therefore the only option that is correct is option B ray n so if we were to look at it again by erasing all these normals if we look at X and N and we chart out the angles of incidence and reflection we can see that angle I is actually quite similar to angle N I mean angle R so the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection for the t the rays X and N where X is the incident and N is the reflected ray so therefore option B N turns out to be the correct reflected ray for this particular scenario. Now that concludes this episode of National Science Olympiad or NSO. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content regarding NSO and other competitive exams, please subscribe to our channel Brain Blitz Audios. So until the next episode, take care, stay safe, bye-bye for now.